Hello and welcome to another episode of Tales from a Professional Nerd. My name is Brian C.P. Steele and I will be your nerd today and every other day that you watch one of my crazy shows. Um, so today, let's go ahead and do The Week in Brian, uh, like normal. Uh, today's episode is, uh, today's episode is going to be a short one. Um, it is a general update on uh, life and industry and uh, uh, projects and just kind of general general stuff. Kind of like a episode in Brian rather than a week in Brian. Um, and uh, the, the primary reason for that is, is not because I don't have anything prepared or anything like that or, or that there's nothing going on. Um, it's just uh, things have been hectic and heavy. Um, for the last week, and I wanted to um, I wanted to take a moment and share. Um, but before we get into that, before we get into that, uh, we have two matters of great import. Uh, matter number one, uh, as I mentioned last week, uh, and I completely completely spaced it because I was on vacation and all that stuff, is I need to tell everybody who the May 2002 Comet Raffle winner is. It would be James Bullen, uh, or Bullen, I, I, I'm assuming it's Bullen, James Bullen, um, from episode 143. You win a random comment raffle prize pack from the Brian Steele uh, Tales from Professional Nerd Studio. <sighs> yeah. Basically, uh, I'm gonna when this airs, I will post on that comment that you won and give you my email address for you to send me your information. And then uh, in the next week or so, you will get a uh, a package in the mail of some random stuff. Uh, some random cool stuff from my uh, from my studio. So who knows? Could be something cool. Could be something that you'll use. Could be something that you open up and go, well, all right. What a weird nerd. Because that's the point. Da -da -da -da. Um, all right. So that was that was the first point of business that I wanted to get out of the way. I wanted to make sure that we announced that. So James, congratulations. Um, and, uh, for the rest of you, make sure you keep putting those comments in because every, uh, every unique comment thread that, uh, that you have, uh, gives you an option to possibly win the, the comment raffle at the end of the month. Uh, so, week in Brian. Um, so, it's been, it's been a good week, actually, uh, per, like, gaming-wise. Got to play some Payday with my kid, um, got to play some Sea of Thieves with one of my besties, um, got to, uh, play in the Waking Realms, uh, d, &D homebrew that my, my friend is running, um, where, uh, we just vanquished our first big bad. Um, I really do think that we are getting close to the end of that campaign, uh, because there's only like two, like really like two big bads that I can think of and we just killed one. Um... It, she was a uh, she was a gnarly vampire chick uh, who had uh, apparently she stems from a kind of vampire from the Witcher series, which I I have not read or played. Sorry, um, but uh, uh, whatever she was, she regenerated every round. She did this like like banshee whale thing that that would, you know, do a bunch of damage. It was, it was really, really cool. It was really hard. It was a hard fight. Uh, there was a lot of us that were down to, like, single digits and no healing at the end of the fight, which is always a good sign. It's a good sign. It was a good, solid challenge. You know, you never, you never want your players to just walk through a bad guy, uh, but you also don't want the bad guy to just smush them under their thumb and go, Mwah. Um, unless it's a narrative thing. So there was that game, and then uh, actually last night we played in our Curse of Strahd game. Um, so I missed one session of the Curse of Strahd game because I was uh, on a boat uh, in the middle of the ocean. And apparently while we were doing that session, uh, they decided to uh, kind of speed up the clock a little bit and go straight to Castle Ravenloft. They felt that we were, 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 were ready enough to go find the things that we need to if we sneak around in the castle. 
And so when we entered the session last night, uh, we were inside the castle. We were up, up in like one of the towers or something. We, the, you know, they apparently they snuck in or or or, or, or somewhat. Um, I don't know how that happened, but either way, we were up in this one of these towers and we started exploring and we got into a couple little mini fights and uh, you know fought off an animated rug and a piece of an a, a, an animated uh, suit of armor that had lightning powers. It was, I mean, it was cool. It was it was it was neat. Um, but uh, we ended the session with us walking into a room, being greeted by Strahd himself. And you know, sitting there holding a skull, and he, you know, for for all intents and purposes, he uh, you know basically sets the skull down, and he's like, you know, what took you so long? So we ended the session right there. Um, so that means in two weeks we have the 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 epic battle. Um, I would assume. Uh, I don't know that for certain, but I get the impression from the DM that that's going to be the that that's going to be the big fight. Um, now the the drawback is uh, there are a lot of people in the group that were spending their uh, spending their daily assets willy nilly against a bunch of skeletons and stuff. So we'll see. This could be a, a this could be an ugly fight. Um, which I you know as the namesake of the campaign, the namesake of the the setting of Dungeons and Dragons. And uh, the 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 epic climactic boss fight uh, kind of makes sense. If if a couple of us don't make it, you know this is the this is the fight. So it's cool. I'm excited. I'm excited for to see how that goes. How that how how that all pans out. Uh, especially because the DM for that uh, that game does not pull punches. Uh, he is not there to. Especially he said that from the very beginning. He was like, "This is a Ravenloft campaign." It will be scary. It will be ugly. And you know, if you make the wrong call or go up against the wrong thing, you could die. And we've lost, I think, three characters along the way of the campaign that needed to be replaced. So it should be fun. I'm excited. I like being challenged. Um, that's pretty much everything game wise. Uh, oh, that's not true. Uh, last week, um, my uh, my son and uh, my son and my wife and I we. Uh, uh, we played a escape room in a box. Uh, it was called like the werewolf experiment or something. Um, and uh, something that my, my, my son got for uh, uh, for Christmas this year. And it's been sitting on the shelf for a while, sitting on the shelf for a while. And we we're like, you know what? For, for family night, let's do it. And I got to say, as someone who does not normally like escape rooms uh, or, or heavily, heavily puzzle, like, like super frustrating puzzles... Um, this was really cool. Uh, it was neat. It came with all kinds of little, little packages, a uh, little UV light to look for clues, um, uh, these little plastic locks that you had to figure out the combination for based off of the clues. I mean, it was, it was really kind of neat. I was, I was very impressed. Uh, you have an hour to do them and at every 15 minute interval, there's an envelope that you can open that gives you, gives you a clue as to, Hey, are you stuck? Try this. Um, and we made it down to 16 minutes left when we when we figured it out. So it was pretty. I was happy. Uh, and for the most part, I think part of the reason why I I liked it as much as I did is because all three of us were doing stuff at the same time. Um, I feel the couple times I've done escape rooms, uh, like with groups or with family or anything, or, or like team building ex exercises, is that it always ended up being like one or two people doing all the work and everybody else just kind of standing around going. Uh, does this do something? Does this do something? And this was not the case. In the, in the case of the the esca escape room in a box, um, we all were doing stuff at the same time. Even my kiddo figured out a riddle that you know Natalie and I were like, "What?" didn't didn't know anything about. Um, it was it was very cool. It was very very cool. Um. One second, uh, my dog is freaking out. I will be right back. Sorry about that. My um, my dog, uh, our youngest dog, is uh, extremely protective of the house. And I've mentioned before that there's a bunch of construction happening. My entire front lawn is gone, and the road in front of our house is missing. And um, there's two guys from the construction crew outside. You know, like they've been 
for the last several, almost at this point, yeah, at least last two months. Um, and he's just out there freaking out, screaming at the top of his lungs, barking his fool head off. My apologies. Um, I don't even know where, where we were talking about before, uh, my dog interrupted everything. Either way, uh, I'm, I'm, oh, uh, the escape room box. It was, it was lots of fun. Um, I, I highly, I highly suggest it. Um, I know they're not that expensive. You, f you find them just about anywhere. You can find, you know, board games, uh, especially places like, uh, like Barnes and Nobles and Target and stuff like that. Um, top notch. Very happy. Uh, the, uh, let's, let's change our wheels, you know, a little bit. Let's go to professional, speaking professionally, um, but which is generally work stuff. Uh, had an, a fantastic meeting with Alex from Resnova about the uh, the new progress of the Warzone Eternal Kickstarter. Uh, well, I should say the Warzone Eternal project, um, because we were just kind of talking about the project as a whole, not specifically the Kickstarter. Um, and uh, I, I I may have seemed in in earlier videos maybe a little disgruntled or a little uh, uh, a little disappointed that the Kickstarter you know had that kind of false start and had to be postponed and all that stuff. Um, but honestly, seeing what Alex and Cabinet and you know the various moving pieces have have in store for this game. Now that uh, they kind of saw what needed to get uh, altered or tweaked or whatever, I think when when it happens, uh, when we can reveal what's going on, I think a lot of the naysayers are going to come back around and go, oh, they were listening. Because Alex's new plan is fantastic uh, from a marketing standpoint. Um uh, I I absolutely love what he's what he's doing um, for my for my part of this. Obviously, not really all that much changes. It's just about getting units designed and play tested and built, and you know uh, you know getting the the books themselves written and or, uh, you know that kind of thing. Uh, so from my part of this, it doesn't change all that much aside from you know making sure I get you know give proper face time to the new products and things. Um, but uh, I, I do think that the start off, the jumping point for Warzone Eternal is going to be much stronger with the new, the new direction, the new, uh, the new angle. So um, very, very good news there. I know I can't talk a lot about it. Again, again I, I know a lot of times I'll talk about things in super vague terms because I want you guys to know that progress is happening and cool stuff is happening. But legally, I can't divulge that information yet. Um, so please just bear with me. Um, as far as, uh, I, I really need to get to, uh, I've got one, uh, painting commission that is sitting there staring me at the face. I need to get that done. I'll probably work on that this weekend. Um, hopefully, uh, and, uh, Renegade's going strong always. Uh, I, I absolutely... I love, well, I'll get a little more into this when I get into the meat of the, the actual topic itself, but um, the uh, the work that I'm doing with Renegade right now, it's no secret I'm working on a Transformers book, um, and uh, it is, without giving anything away, it is going to be a major book in the series, um, and I am absolutely looking forward to people getting their hands on it and both players and game masters getting a chance to use it. Uh, that being said, I had a meeting with Elisa earlier this week and we discussed kind of some of the future stuff that I'm going to be doing. And after this project, uh, when this book wraps up, I get to go immediately into another Power Ranger source book. Um, very excited about that one. Uh, bought a lot of cool stuff. I'm gonna have to do some some research reading and uh, research viewing um, to get caught up on a couple of things just to make sure that I have everything lined up. But knowing some of the stuff that I get to put in that that book, very excited. Um, very 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 excited. Uh, and as a side note on that book, um, I get to uh, finally work with a friend of mine 
that I've known for years and years and years, uh, who's also in the industry, um, they've been trying to uh, get in with Renegade for a while because they like the licenses, and uh, I, we finally got them the green light to go ahead and fill out the NDA and all that stuff, um, and I'm going to get to, to kind of work alongside them for this first book. They're going to help me help me with a couple of sections of it uh, to get it up off the ground. Uh, I'm, I'm jazzed. Uh, I, I have never worked with this person before, and uh, I think I think it's going to be very cool, the end result. Um, and then immediately after that book, after that Power Rangers book, um, there's a little bit of leeway as to I might I might do a couple of little splashy projects, uh, or what's probably going to happen is there's another big Transformers book that needs uh, that needs my attention, and uh, that'll probably be the next thing that that comes up, um, which that's going to be again. I, I I love pretty much everything that Renegade gives me, so I can't. I, I don't have any complaints. Uh, so when they say, you know, what about this project? What about that project? What about this other project? I love them all. I think they're great. Um, all right. So let's get into the... Oh, um, uh, one last thing in the weekend, Brian, before we move on to the actual topic itself. Uh, so my weight loss uh, uh, thing, I had said that when I went on the cruise, it was going to be problematic it was going to be a setback i'm gonna gain 10 pounds you know it's it's gonna be it's gonna be horrible um because i was taking the week off because i'm gonna enjoy myself and enjoy the fact that there's amazing food at at on these cruises and uh, i did um surprisingly i only gained like five pounds like five or six pounds i don't know maybe it was all the walking around or time on the beach or, or whatever um but uh, I am back on track. Uh, I am uh, back to trying to stick to my to my diet plan uh, as far as uh, you know, not stuffing my face with a bunch of carbs all the time. Uh, and uh, so far, so good. Uh, I have not quite got back down to the sixty pounds lost that I had, but I am very close. So. Here's to hoping that it just keeps moving in that right direction. Uh, you know, with the heat wave that has hit Indiana in the last couple days, um, I've definitely been sweating like crazy every time I go anywhere. So uh, here's to hoping that uh, that helps as well. You know, crank up that metabolism a little bit. Um, but yeah, all right. So let's let's get to the general update on uh, on Brian stuff. Uh, so, uh, it's been, it's been crazy. Uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, I started planning for the next, uh, family D&D &D session. Um, I haven't talked about it in a while because, uh, there has been a pretty long stretch where I, um, I wasn't sure where things were headed, uh, mostly because, uh, my, my stepkid, uh, who plays a... Um, a tiefling rogue. Uh, the last couple times we've played, they have very much made it abundantly clear that sitting around a table playing a role-playing game really is not their bag. Um, which I'm not disappointed. I'm not upset. You know, everybody's got their own stuff. Uh, I'm glad that they gave it a try. Um, but uh, when I started planning the games out, uh, I was like, okay, how am I going to figure, you know, how, how are we going to get this together? And so I got in touch with them and, and asked, uh, I just texted them and said, Hey, are you interested in still playing in the, in the family game? I totally get it. If you're not, no harm, no foul. And they were like, no, not really. It's, it's just not for me. And I said, okay, cool. Uh, you know. Still love your geeky daddy. Yes. Um, but uh, uh, it does mean that the family game got went down to three people. Um, and so I started thinking about it. And I was like, I need to I need to fatten the fatten the ranks or we have to reset. And 
we, considering how new you know, one player this is their first chronicle ever another player this is like maybe their third long third or fourth ongoing character that has made it past you know second level um so it's uh it it, it kind of came to the fact that uh i needed to ask some of my locals some of my, some of my friends that, that are you know as good as family so they deserve to be in the family the family game uh so i reached out to a few uh two of them responded in a positive sense uh not to, that's not to say the others responded in a negative sense it's just that the others couldn't be involved um and uh one of them is joining the game that we are scheduled for this sunday father's day is kind of my gift to myself i get to run D, &D for my family um but uh, uh they are adding a character that i have not seen played um i have my nose itches um i have not seen this kind of character played and i uh i'll be interested to see uh, this particular player is normally kind of a combat monster you know a lot of i found all these combos i found you know this plus this equals i'm unhittable this plus this equals you know kill 10 guys in a row um and instead they are playing a ut completely utilitarian wizard out of like the strix haven you know style of sort of sort of wizard professors um in fact the he he says that they're they they do not have a combat spell or they do not have a damaging spell they've got they've got other utility spells that can be used in combat but they have no damaging spells so i don't know it'll be interesting to be see so I, i've worked them into the story already um well i will let you know next week on how that comes together um all right so the elephant in the room uh giant uh, giant giant uh scary nightmare element is uh there has been a lot of a lot of turmoil and a lot of negativity and a lot of um i don't want to downplay it but a lot of drama in the tabletop rpg community in the last week week or so and uh it has surrounded people's contracts, different companies, um, so certain friendships, um, including uh, a, a person, a, a, a couple who we thought were very good friends of ours. Um, and uh, some, some stuff has come to light that is very scary um like straight up scary uh about uh, one of these people and the other uh has been caught up for years and years decade over a decade at this point with uh problematic partners um and between myself and my wife uh our history and our friendship with these guys um it is it is very hard to to see to see someone being hurt that you care about it is even harder when you know a lot of that hurt is coming from their own decisions. And for someone like myself, as a professional, it goes one step further in the fact that I need to view things not only as a person, but also as a professional. And... Uh, it's uh it's very hard it's just hard it's been a hard week to see a lot of these things and uh to come to the realization that perhaps people uh or at least persons that you were close with um had completely separate lives that you were not privy to and um 
It's just scary. It's just it's scary to think about that kind of stuff. But it has done. Uh, if if there is if there is one thing that it has done, aside from um, highlight the good, the 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 good relationships and the people out there that are um, trying to uh, stand up for good work ethic and, and things like that. It has also done two other things. Um, it has shown, it has shown the, it has shown off kind of the ugly face of the mob. Um, there are a lot of people out there that are piling on into this bad situation calling for, you know, complete ends of careers and, you know, go away. We never want to see, we never want to hear from you again. You know, just the absolute opposite of forgiveness. And I don't know about you and I don't know about everybody out there, but I know I was taught that you can be mad at someone and you can be mad at someone's actions, but you should always want them to strive to be better. You should always want to try and see them rise up from their bad places. That no matter what, you shouldn't just want them to wallow in their, in their own filth and disappear. And that, especially for the people who were not wronged in this instance, the people who have nothing to do with this, calling for their heads. I understand. Hyperbole is a big thing, especially on the internet. You get you get a keyboard in your hand, and it's very easy to say things for shock value. For hey, look at look at me. Get the let me. Let, I want people to pay attention to what I'm saying, so I'm not just electrons in the wild. But there are some things that are being said about this instance that are downright hateful. And I don't understand hating someone who has not has not affected you or your family directly. I just don't. I can think what they do is wrong. I can hate the actions they're taking. But if there's any chance that someone can turn their stuff around and possibly become a better person and a better friend and a better you know, mother, sister, wife, whatever. I have to believe that that's possible. I just have to. And seeing people with such venom and just condemnation about stuff that they are effectively getting secondhand information about. If you're involved... If you're the one being hurt, I get it. Hate away. I have people that I will never talk to again and never want to because they hurt me directly. And I think, and especially, you know, following up on them, they've continued to be toxic, horrible people. But there are also people out there that have done bad things that I don't like. And I'm like, God, I hate it. But if I heard that they were making amends, if I heard that they were doing something about it, I'd believe them until I saw the, the outcome. And I'd be glad that they're trying. All right. So the other thing, uh, the other thing about this is that it has highlighted, it really, really has highlighted um, the good people that I've worked with in the industry the, the friends that I've made that um, aren't just names on a page. They're not just one of the masses that I've clicked like to or that I occasionally see on Facebook and go, yeah, they're my friend. You know, people like Matt Forbeck. Um, people like Matt Forbeck, Jason Hardy. Definitely Elisa. Uh, Elisa Teague, 
um, Peter Atkinson, Sarah Moore, Patrick Keefe, you know, people who have become, cl I've, cl I've become closer with, uh, not just as a, as a gamer or as a, uh, as a, as talent or employee, employer, but I mean, these are really good people and I am so fortunate. Alex from Resnova. Brian Snowdy from back in the privateer press days. That guy is, he, every time I see him, I, I just want to hug him and, and buy him a beer. Rick Ankney. Um, the tabletop Santa. Some new people I met recently on uh, on the uh, on a cruise on the uh, on the cru the gaming cruise. You know, there are so many. Jake from Alpha Omega and uh, AC10, my sponsor. Yeah, I could go on for days. Dave Taylor from back when we were working at Dark Age. Speaking of Dark Age, Dave Doust who gave me my shot, got me to where I'm going. There are so many good people in the industry that when a bad one or, or bad circumstance rises, it's hard. It's hard sometimes to think that those people are out there um, in an industry that is about making people enjoy making people forget about their troubles not adding to them and uh, I'm very thankful I am very very thankful for the relationships that I've made um, and and that's not even just on a professional level where I can be like well I'm very thankful for the the people that I've met and the people that work with me and you know I, I I'm not I'm not going to be like that. I'm thankful for the people who, when I see them at a convention, I generally, general, genuinely want to, you know, buy a beer with them, to share, to share a drink, to clink our glasses together. I want to create good times. I want stories to be able to tell you guys, to, to be able to tell, um, my uh, my other but you know my other friends the people who can't make it at that time um you know i want technically business zoom meetings that are 90% catching up on life and making sure that both of us are doing okay and then 10% talking about the job i want relationships that I can remember 10, 20 years from now, either because we're still friends, we're still connected, or because it was a good time in my life. And I would like to say that some of these relationships and some of these connections are fostered because, you know, I was, I was taught to, to focus on friendships. I was taught to make the most out of, a, out of a situation if I can. Some of it, I'm sure, is just, you know, trial and error over the years. Um, but I do know that uh, I am... I'm so so thankful for people like Elisa who I work with work for she's she's my boss lady um, people like Alex you know he is my he's I'm, I'm friends with him even if there was no Warzone Eternal uh, you know, yeah it brought us together but if Warzone Eternal died tomorrow not that it's gonna um, we would remain friends. We would remain, you know, we, we would survive past the project. 
and these are the kinds of people that I I wish and hope that the rest of the rest of the industry can find their own versions of they can find those connections I hope that you as people as fans as gamers you know yeah some, you, you, some of these instances you're not really it's not it doesn't really pertain to you but you have your own versions you got your own friends from work you've got gamers that you only see now and again game store employees maybe as your connection to the industry but whatever it is I just really, I really hope, and I know this this episode, for being just basically an update on everything, has kind of turned into a, a, a weird place that I think, and, and lots of you have probably already clicked off being like, oh, Brian's being a weird emo guy. Um, I needed this catharsis, I needed this to get out and to talk to you guys, because uh, honestly, a couple of years ago when I started this channel... That's what this was. It was me getting to talk my feelings out into a camera when I didn't think anyone was listening. And at this point, I have, you know, so lots of subscribers, uh, followers, people who follow me on different social medias that do, in fact, listen to what I've got to say about things. Even if it's just to laugh at me and, and point out, you know, my shortcomings. Um... But I, uh, I just really, I really hope the best for everybody, and I do mean that. I mean everybody, even, even people who have revealed themselves to be frightening in certain relevant space. Um, I want people who need help to get help people who need out to get out you know what I mean some relationships you need to you need to realize that you're being taken advantage of but I want people to you know find find the stuff that makes you happy find the stuff that gives you that positive spin in life and especially when it comes to like games and gamers and uh and all that our goal is to brighten people's lives a few hours at a time and when we fail at that especially kind of collectively as an industry when this positive place turns into a negative minefield of just waiting for the next person to call for your head. It saddens me. I've been doing this for 20 years, and uh, there's been a couple of times that I am disappointed uh, in, in my fellow gamers. A lot of times disappointed in some of my fellow industry members but I gotta try and stay focused on the awesomes focus on the Matt's and Elise's and Jason's and Ben's and Pages and 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 fo focus on all of that because I love what I do I adore my career I love the fact that I have finally managed to turn it into something that can keep my family afloat. And I wouldn't have it any other way. So if I can find any capacity to pass on that positivity or try and, you know, remind people, hey, maybe back off the trigger a little bit. Maybe that hyperbolic statement you're about ready to make isn't doing anybody any good. You might think that you're you're raising the signal and, and spreading the message, but 
it's already out there. Maybe it, you should put away your torches and see if, you know, and wait. Patience. Change does not happen instantly. Especially if you won't let it. A bad guy is not going to stop being a bad guy if you tell him that they can never be redeemed. Alright, enough of all that. I'm going to get going. Uh, I love you guys. All of you out there. Uh, next week I'm sure I'll have a better episode that's less, less emotional, less heavy, and uh, more about game stuff. Um, but, uh, either way, um, please, please, please go to, uh, Armor Class 10, go get some awesome, uh, geekery threads, make sure you use your discount code TFAPN, um, and, uh, check out Sufferante, uh, the, the, uh, tabletop simulator, the board game simulator online, uh, use the same discount code TFAPN to get 60 days platinum free um and uh now it, it only started a couple weeks ago but I've, I've i've never actually said this to you guys um over at turbo dork uh the amazing you know color shifting metallic paints uh that uh, that I, I i love and adore um make sure that when you go over there follow the link to uh, or, or follow at least like the sales link in my description of this video uh, your first purchase over there, you get a discount because you are coming to them from me. So go check out Turbo Dork. They're great paints. They're amazing. Um, and, uh, you know, stay safe. Smile. Uh, wear a mask if you can. Get boosted. Get vaccinated. Do all the things because COVID needs to go away to get us back to normal. And uh, more than anything, please, please, please. Hug the people that you love, treat them right, treat them with respect, and uh, put a smile on someone's face. But more than anything, play some games. We'll see you in a week.